On your side tonight with the power of young minds. Gerrymandering isn't a topic of conversation for most teens. By definition, it's when the boundaries of a political district are manipulated and drawn to favor a specific party or class. It's been a big issue, of course, here in the state of North Carolina. Lines here have been ordered twice by the courts since 2010 to be redrawn. In those cases, the courts ruled that the gerrymandering was done by Republicans and it went too far. I think for some, on particularly on the Democratic side, they would argue that instead of the voters picking their representatives, it's the representatives picking the voters. Now, on the Republican side, they would contend, well, Democrats used to gerryman gerrymander just as badly as we did, so it's kind of a you know bipartisan issue, but it all depends on how you view it through your partisan lenses. And with the new census numbers coming out, we learn soon North Carolina will get another seat in the House of Representatives, which, of course, means more fights over drawing maps. That issue got the interest of Ardry Kell High School senior Dave Shada. He created an algorithm to evenly draw districts, and he just won a scholarship for it, and he's soon going to be heading off to MIT. We caught up with him in Ballantyne earlier this week. I first got introduced to the, the idea of gerrymandering in my, my civics class in high school. Um, and we were sort of discussing local politics, and the discussion came to who our local congressional representative was. And um, as it turned out, in the class we came up with three different names. And uh, our school was actually split between three different congressional districts. Um, and, and so that seemed very strange to me. And it triggered a thought. An idea. People have always have biases, whether they're political or otherwise. And, and sort of the only fair way to redistrict states is to, to remo remove humans from the equation altogether. And, uh, you know, and, and it took a few months, and, uh, um, and I came up with this, this new algorithm, which, which redistricts states in a, in a more fair way. Have you uh, explored this with current politicians? So specifically, um, the past year, I've been collaborating with researchers at MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab. And, um, there's a there's actually a coalition of of scientific researchers um, called the the metric geometry and gerrymandering group, mm -hmm. um, and the, sort of the the main purpose of that group is to um, dismantle gerrymandering using these these mathematical tools and analysis. Getting into MIT, I mean that's not an easy thing to do. I was I was a little bit shocked. I wasn't necessarily expecting to get in. They they told us okay the results are going to come out at 3:14. So I said okay let me log in let me check, and then I saw it. And then, and then I rushed outside and I called my parents. I said, Mom, Dad, look at, look at this. Does math come easy to you? Because for a lot of people, it doesn't. I, I don't know if I would say it comes, comes easy. I think, I think math is, is definitely a, a difficult subject. Yeah. I, I can still remember sort of when I was in, uh, in kindergarten and first grade. Um, and you know, I would, I would come home and we would be on the dinner table. And, and I would beg my dad to ask, you know, to, to give me a math problem. Because I just, I just loved solving those problems. Um, and uh, and it was like candy for me yeah. uh, as a kid. Is it sort of like you know that, that excitement, that rush you get of solving an equation, right? Of solving a problem. Do, do you feel that? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's uh, that's exactly right. I mean, it's uh, it, it, it is like a you know like an adrenaline rush almost. <laughs> and that rush was fed by math counts competitions that started in middle school. This idea of having a, a math competition. Um, was really game changing because you know, I think a lot of times people think that, oh, math is nerdy, math is boring, it's dull. Right. Um, but when you look at math counts especially and math competitions in general, um, you know, it makes math fun, it makes it exciting, it makes it, uh, makes it cool. And then, and then in eighth grade, um, you know, I got the opportunity to go to the national competition and that was, uh, you know, I have to say that was one of the best experiences I I've ever had. Um, because the way they set up the national competition, it really makes the, the, the middle school math students feel like rock stars. That's pressure, though, man. I mean, that's the fourth quarter of a football game or the ninth inning of a baseball game. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and that's the point, right, is that now math is exciting, right? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's not just, uh, it's not a boring thing, you know. Even if you don't understand the math that's going on, you can still tune in, you can still watch. Right. Um, you can watch those kids, you know, uh, answer within a split second. Before you even finish reading the problem, they already have the answer. And it was Math Counts that just recently awarded Dev a $3,000 scholarship. I'm really grateful to Math Counts and, uh, you know, and their sponsors to, to give this opportunity. Um, because I think uh, it, it goes a long way to, to help encourage students to pursue math. Bright young man with a bright future, absolutely. Do you know of a student doing great things? Let us know. Email askjamie at wbtv.com or use the hashtag OYS tonight.